All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Assassination Classroom, Season 1, Episode 12. Mm. Got introduced to Itona. Itona. He With a boy. Tentacles. And he has tentacles. And mm -hmm. he has a kinship with Koro Sensei that That's is right. complicated because of Koro Sensei's past. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah, we were we were most definitely wrong about the uh, the, the teacher being oh, right. uh, yes. the the yeah. guy who was in mm -hmm. the white cloak and everything. So yes. Completely no, not the different. Principal. Completely totally different, different, different people. Yeah. But um the point of conflict here that has been uh, really focused on is mm -hmm. that he is not going to be handled the same way as things went with Ritsu. Ritsu, mm -hmm. well, it was all solved just in terms yeah. of conflict in the it's one fairly episode. Fairly cut and dry. Yeah. But with Itona, there's a lot more to go. No, it's yeah, it's it's not the same. So mm -hmm. we we have to we have to save him in some ways. We have yep. to maybe have the students kind of work with Koro Sensei to help him with his family in a sure in kind of a way. There, this is like mm -hmm. a family problem getting brought up kind of. and there's a bit of awkwardness in that koro sensei is not sharing with them everything no he isn't because maybe he can't or maybe he doesn't want it's to. not something that would be helpful for them mm -hmm. yeah yeah the world's complicated out there it's not mm -hmm. just this classroom where everything can be yeah. a lot simpler right where it's boiled down to just just assassinate koro sensei yep it might not be possible but it's rather simple when you think right. about it it's it is just, it is we either do it or we don't you know yeah right so uh how are they all gonna handle this i don't know without further ado y'all let's get into it fishing interesting okay. Oh, oh, that kind of fishing. Ah. All right. <laughs> it's all the heat is the thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Nice. Oh, oh, crap. Come on. Okay. Come on. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Please. As you can see by my sharply angled. Oh! New OP! New OP! Alright! Oh yeah, teach us, teach us, we're still growing up. Awesome. I love how they're still doing the same dance, it's just a different setting that they're in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a bit harder than 50-50, but yeah. Oh. Yeah! Aww. Yeah, there's Satona. Yeah, but he was still framed as a villain. Mm -hmm. Or just an antagonistic force. Right, the tentacles were out and everything. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, they don't even get to participate in the tournament arc. Have Koro Sensei be all the players. <clears throat> oh. And yet he said it was impossible, and yet he still wants to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the, the baseball stadium music as well. Oh. Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, in the OP. Told us about that focus, yes. Oh, 
Dang, all right. So we're already at the match. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This tournament arc, then we just skip it. Go to the exhibition match. Yeah. That's what we're here for. Training montage? Nope. <laughs> He's prepping his uh, stuff to prep. What? Three, one, two, three. They have a code book to decode. Wow. Show no mercy. Go for blood. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right. This should be easy. Mm -hmm. What is this encouragement? This yeah. is so positive. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Four kilos. Wait. Yeah, that's. I think that's ninety miles an hour. I think that's ninety miles an hour, dude. Bunting. All right. Yep. And up the first baseline. So we can end up being pointed towards first base. Yep. Yep. All right. Good. He's running through the base as well. Oh. Bunting in general. So just to tire out the pitcher. Hmm. Right, right. Ah, okay. <gasps> but Wait, compared so to Mach doing? 20 speeds, it's nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good. Yes, Takabayashi! What did you learn? Oh my god. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now you can't bunt anymore, though. This what? is the problem, because then they can just toss it to the catcher. Oh, and then they have their best player. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Oh, get it. Get it sent. Okay. So he's going to throw his curveball now. Right, right, right. Yep, yep, yep. Because uh -huh. <laughs> if he does the fastball and he actually gets a solid hit on it, it'll right. be gone. Right. Yep, and then pull it back. Yep, yep. Nice! And a simple base hit. A simple base awesome. hit will bring in at least two runs. Yep. Oh my god. Wow, a triple! Yeah! So he got three runs? Three runs. Yeah. Three RBI hit? Oh my god! Oh. Oh. Is he gonna take over? <laughs> Watch, it's gonna be like his son is the pitcher or something. Oh, geez, wait. Hmm. Did he just panic just because of the stress? Maybe. There wasn't yeah. any power involved. Though, I don't think there. so. It's just eyes are dramatic red. effect. Right. Oh crap. Okay. This is all right. This is interesting. He's actually like being really like petty about this, so okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, they can totally do that. There's no rules against it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. But if they get any kind of hit. We can't have that. Oh. Oh, crap. Wait, he's on third base right now, dude. Are they gonna hurt him? Oh. No. Oh. Oh my god. Become the bad guys. 
Easy out. Nope, nope. Mm -hmm. Yep, stay on third, yep. <laughs> hey, they got three runs in. Yep, that's still great. If they don't score more than two for the rest of the game, it's okay. <laughs> He's like, find inspiration, find inspiration. Right. Is Karasuma gonna help? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is she just now figured out how the game is played? Yeah. Oh, curveball. Yeah. yeah, it kind of is good at that. That's his style. Nice. Addressing the crowd. Oh! Oh! <laughs> 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 Riling them up. Okay, but they still got defeated. Wow. Oh. Uh oh. Infield home run. Oh, second base. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, they're going to start adding up points. Oh, crap. Oh, boy. Jeez. Okay. Okay. Base is loaded. Oh, all right, all right. Oh my God, <laughs> he's like freaking brainwashed and everything. Yeah. Oh, Keikaku Dor. Is he gonna cheat? Oh. Mm. Oh, yes, get in the head. Oh, yes, yes, then it'll tie. Yeah, yeah. Well, then. And he's too proud to say no, right? Just sort of underhanded into the... <laughs> that they're gonna keep missing. <laughs> to be fair, that is something that they are doing that is... Yeah. <laughs> He's got kind of a cool right. say face! Yeah, and they dodge it easily. <gasps> ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ
That was awesome. That not was a great. beach episode. Not no, a beach. Not episode. a fishing episode. Not a fishing episode. I will say, my hopes got up a little, got worked up a little bit at the idea of a beaching episode. But you know, right, right. Yeah. Now that's the thing that they do usually, like five or six episodes before the finale. Yeah. Of the series, you know. Well, and it's a good point though. They do need to get those proper swimsuit JPEGs for Ritsu before they can do that, you know. Right. Because she definitely will want to be included. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. And they can't have it just be a thing where it's like, you know, just a few members of the class. It has mm -hmm. to be everyone yep. that's there. Even and then, Moto sensei And then they can use their assassination techniques mm. for the anti-peeping security, you know. <gasps> Brilliant. Yeah. Yes. I, I gotta say... I felt like there are two things that are nostalgic to us about this episode for okay, each of us individually. Yeah. For me, I love, like, I love just the idea of baseball coming into anime and stuff because I, mm -hmm. I used to watch and play a lot of baseball. Yeah. But you have one of your favorite shows ever doing a baseball style episode. That's just that's, that's very similar stupid. to this, yeah. though. Uh huh. With lots of gimmicks and stuff. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, we. Uh, there you go. We didn't get a beach episode. No, we, we did got not. baseball. Episode, we got a baseball which episode, which is some might say even just as important. Mm. You know. Um, and it was it was absolutely ridiculous. I loved it. And <laughs> yes. oh man. Yes. Oh man. I loved that. We actually got into a lot of the mechanics of baseball mm -hmm. and didn't do the sports thing in most other sports anime, which is explaining all the sports stuff, uh -huh. which I would say kept the pace of it moving rather well. Yes. And then also, since it's an exhi exhibition game, they actually had only three innings. Right. So it kept things, I would say, moving rather quickly. And mm -hmm. then when the episode was over, it felt like it was over in a blur yep like it, it yep. felt really quick in that regard and it was uh, also something where we got to revisit a character from the beginning of the show yes with like more focus and things like that which yep. is cool because you know there's a lot of characters in this show right so now that we went through the first core and we get to get a little revisit that was awesome um yeah and in this be... fun ridiculous way right that could be a formula that they do for the second half of this season is that they oh, go sure. back through the students and add extra depth to the ones that they've already introduced, mm -hmm. and then they combine that with little bits of, you know, new stuff as as needed. Sure. Uh, but Sugino being the one that was the first character to be given focus after Nagisa uh -huh. in episode two, we know that Sugino was on this team. Yep. Mm -hmm. Was a pitcher, but ended up, ended up pitching a, a horrible game unfortunately and mm -hmm. was not only benched but then because he got benched which is, i think is a good thing to we needed to remind ourselves of then he stopped studying right and it was because of his grade suffering that he then came to class 3e mm -hmm. which i think is something that was brought up lightly lightly here in this episode in that they were saying but we've got to study and keep up with practice and stuff. You uh -huh. guys can just goof off over there. Right. And that's got to hurt for him because oh, it's yeah. like he's saying, yep. Yep. no, I I know that struggle. I, mm -hmm. But he maybe feels a little bit of guilt still because like, yeah, they're still right, actually- He, they're he still dropped actually, the ball there. Right. Yeah. And they're still actually doing that. That is something that, that they're, is being, true. they're having yeah. to do. So they mm -hmm. are a little bit of his mistake being kind of thrown in his face, if you will. Uh -huh. Yeah. But I loved the way they blended the comedy with this oh, yeah. power of yep. uh -huh. teammate friendship thing going uh -huh. into this actual game. Well, and one of the things that I was kind of wondering with this is, mm -hmm. okay, because like you mentioned that my uh, my personal favorite baseball episode in anime is the one from the Melancholy Harvey. of Haruhi Suzumiya, yeah. where it's basically, yeah, no, we can't win, so we just use uh, uh, space-time continuum magic to make it so that we're always hitting home runs. Right. Yeah, cool, because why not, right? Because the fate of the world rests on this baseball mm -hmm. match. It does. But here, it's like, okay, 
because of how Koro Sensei is as a teacher, he has right. to teach. Even though he could win the game by himself if yes. he was the one playing, that's not a victory. Exactly. It's about the kids doing it themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, how is he going to actually properly prepare them? And the fact that it's like, no, I'm just going to... I'm going to do what I can mm -hmm. to perfectly simulate what you guys need to practice against and also yep. get you used to 300 kilometer an hour <laughs> fastballs instead of, you know, 140, right? That way it's, you know, it's no See, big deal. See, he was throwing 175 miles an hour or something like that. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's no big deal. <laughs> yeah, that's, you guys, you guys can do that. Yeah, it'll be uh -huh. fine. It'll be fine. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably no. even faster than 175 miles an hour. But just, no, no problem at all. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> like, by the way, I'll just say having the gonads to stay in a batter's box when someone is throwing 300 kilometer an hour fastballs at you, yeah, will literally like make you like like your balls uh -huh. like drop to your knees like entirely and then suck back up into your and stomach well, well <laughs> that yeah probably but just just that was happening was something i wish they had brought up as like that was part of the reason why they were so chill about him swinging uh -huh. the bat near them because they had of course practiced right in assassination techniques against mm -hmm. koro sensei so they could yep. see things that were moving that quickly but I'll just say the reason why you can hit the ball in baseball is because the batter's uh, position is so far away from the pitcher. Right. But yeah. you, your reflexes are not going to be that good if you're that good. Yeah. <laughs> like, what is it? You have, like, like, the barest fraction of a second to basically perceive the ball and then the other one to just make your swing. Right. You have like, basically, I think it's less than a quarter of a second to decide whether the ball is going to be worth swinging at. Right. For one. And you kind of all already have to be swinging, and then you just yeah. stop the swing. Right. What it is mm -hmm. in baseball is you have a balanced position with your feet leveled with your shoulders, and then you shift your weight a little bit towards your back foot as the pitcher is starting to wind up. And then as the throw is coming in, you begin to step into it and lean into it by positioning the weight into your other mm -hmm. foot. And then as you're driving your body to rotation and stuff, you're basically prepared to swing. The right. rest of it is all something that continues through naturally, but you don't have to do it. Right, and then as that happens, you're tracking the ball into the bat so yes. that you're, as you're right. swinging, you're lining it up with where it'll and, need to go. And when you're a young baseball player, it is such a mind thing when the balls are coming in so fast so that like, you have to like yeah. not blink, uh -huh. stay focused, right. follow it, from the trajectory of oh, yeah. the pitcher's arm. Yep. Cause so much of the game just ends between the pitcher and the batter. Right. A perfect game of baseball is where nothing happens. Yep. Yep. So the batters just completely yep. whiff it. Uh-huh. But I loved the way they 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 did this janky oh, strategy. Yeah. yeah, the whole thing with the bunting and everything and like the the oh the principal comes in. The principal oh my is God, going yes. and I'm like, how is the principal gonna oh okay, yeah. He just says, No, just they're only bunting, so just play really close. It's like right. okay, yeah, there we go. But then like I like uh, that the principal was competent. It did feel like they were starting to point us in a direction that the principal had such charisma or such power of his it, voice. It's the power of the uh, the deep villain voice in the red eyes. Yes, that he can brainwash people, which, mm -hmm. okay, okay, I buy that. But then also just the fact that that happened in addition to the fact that he the coach stared just... down the coach till he nearly, like, had a heart attack. <laughs> right. That... That just makes him, I think, look primarily just more evil. Uh huh. But it's also something where I'm like, no, they're not trying to set up any kind of powers for him, no, right? No, we're going to reveal that he is actually a vampire and that nah. he's using his psychic, you know, vampire abilities. <laughs> like, yeah. like, I hope it's not that. So so I'm just going to go with it's more the comedy, oh, yeah. evil antagonist yep. angle for now. Just, just, it's just being extra to... Extra, exactly. To just add on to the fact that, yeah, Koro Sensei and his teachings are rather extra, you know? You, so Yeah, you, you know what I love about this whole thing? Mm -hmm. Is that all of this stuff was something that they needed in order to actually stop Class 3E. Because as Koro yeah. Sensei put it, we're gonna show them baseball from hell. <laughs> right. I'll tell you that there are stories in baseball's history of players who are literally the players from hell. Oh, Ty uh -huh. Cobb is one of the most legendary oh, yeah. baseball yep. players of all time who was an 
asshole, yep. an absolute yep. dick on the. He would heckle every pitcher every oh, yeah. time. He would do all kinds of weird shit. Slide with his with his uh, his you know spiked cleats up yeah, and things that, like that. Like, that was the basic yeah, stuff, right? Like he was just like disrespectful, like oh, just yeah. straight up just. He would ignore pitchers if he didn't like them. Like, he would straight up just stand in the batter's box and just wiggle his ass at them. Just like, nope, I'm not even going to do anything. And they would get so rattled by that, they'd walk him. And then he would steal all the bases. And then while he's at third base, he would yell shit in their faces until they were just like, Ugh! and I, umpires didn't care about that stuff at the time. They yeah. were like, yeah, you're already getting that stuff from the stands. What's the difference of getting it from this guy? Exactly. Here? And Ty he, Cobb was like, kind of rules, my baseball but... hero as a kid. <laughs> oh my God. Like, <laughs> yeah, he was, he it was, was a dime ultimate ultimate troll. Flipping a dime, whether it was him or Babe Ruth, you know, it was just, it was just oh one of the God. two, right? Oh my God! But 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 I, I just love that as someone that I mean, like like you play baseball as well uh -huh. for, for a little bit. Oh, but yeah. Like you were able to follow why this strategy worked yep. really yep. well. Uh -huh. like, well, and I'm like, glad that they brought up the whole thing of the uh, even if they're really good, these are still kids that are playing baseball, right, right. and there are differences. Yes. Like when I was playing baseball, and this made it oh God, this made it so boring for me. I stopped playing baseball when I was like 12, right? Right. But the thing is, is that when you're playing baseball at 10, 11, 12, and you have a 10, 11, 12 year old pitcher, <laughs> no, they can't throw it in the batter's box. That, that like, like you're going to get walked the, or like, like maybe eight times out of 10. Right. So, so it was something where the umpires would just be like, they just start calling things strikes when they clearly weren't just because they're like, you're not swinging, dude. Like, the, <laughs> like you need, you need to do this. And, and at the end of the season, I got the award from my coach of wa most walks. And I was like, yes, thank you very much. I will take that award. <laughs> As you walked away from the sport forever. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. It was just like, all right, just, yeah, just get walked Jacob and then a uh, pinch runner. Cause I wasn't very fast either. So, oh, <laughs> just, oh. yeah, I'll get, I'll get someone who's, who's the fast. Yeah. Johnny. Yeah. I'll get him on. I'll get him on first base. No, just you were pretty order. tall. I would say even at that time, like, you yeah, you but I wasn't on a height, but, but I wasn't but, like, but right, but right, right. But, but yeah, that was the thing. I was tall, so my batter's box was even bigger. Or is it the batter's strike zone? The strike, strike zone. zone. The yeah. strike zone was even yeah. bigger. So I was like, <sighs> you just yeah. intimidated them. That's what it was. Because you had a oh, good death. scowl. Oh yeah. Because I remember definitely. when you would you would mm. face off against the pitchers, you'd be like, throw me a strike. I dare you. Throw, throw me a strike. Like, you can't if you do it. Can you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one loves you. <laughs> no. I wasn't like that. No, 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 no. But uh, but I remember when you would. Get up to to to, to bat. You, I would try and you would try and stare, down, and the stare down the pitcher. No, because the pitchers would try and do that too. Like because mm -hmm. when you're 10, 11, 12, like you know you're, you're you you right. just recently started not wetting the bed like for a lot of these kids, right? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, so you know. I mean, you, you, let's be fair. Let's be fair. Four yeah. years ago, you know. <laughs> but so of course the pitchers are trying to like they're trying to like you know stare daggers at the batters. So I was like, all right, yeah, okay, okay. Right. I know I. Can't can't hit the ball even if you do throw a strike. Oh but my god. Do you think you can throw three strikes yeah. before you throw four balls? I don't think so. I'll just say I really identify, I think I mentioned this a little bit, I really identify with Sugino's whole thing of being the pitcher that ends up getting benched and it kind of oh, kills your passion yeah, that, for baseball. that's gotta I, suck. I was what's known as the relief pitcher. There's mm -hmm. the opening, the starting pitcher, the relief pitcher, and the closer. The closer is usually the one that has one or two really hard to hit throws and makes no mistakes. The starting pitcher is usually your strongest pitcher that has the stamina to be able to throw six innings, you know, mm -hmm. like it's nothing. But the relief pitcher is literally just there to be a breather person <laughs> Survive for so it. that the team can hang on <laughs> right. until the closing pitcher just comes in to pitch one, maybe two innings. Right. So I was the relief pitcher for a small period of time in which I played baseball. Mm -hmm. And my whole thing was that I don't want to give up a home run. That's literally the main thing that was my job. Mm -hmm. I couldn't throw fast. I couldn't throw weird stuff. But I eventually figured out how to throw a changeup. And it wasn't good. <laughs> Let me just tell you, it wasn't good. And I didn't have a fast, fast ball. Uh -huh. So what I would do is I would just throw balls that were like all over the place, but they were kind of, kind of quick-ish. And then as I would get tired, I would then start to mix in the change-ups. And anytime I struck someone out, 
my team was so gracious of me, they'd be like, yeah, dude, like, yeah, dude. You're doing it, Peter, it you're doing it. It was the guy at the it. bottom of the lineup that hadn't hit anything all game from the starting pitcher anyway, but you know, you're doing it, dude. It was and, the players that were like me that just couldn't hit regardless. Well, well, I couldn't hit much either, but like the thing that was great was that that feeling when you're a pitcher and you do anything right, it's the best feeling Oh ever. yeah. It's literally the ever. whole game revolves around you while like you're doing it, well. For a brief period like, of time, it, it does. And it, and it is, I would say, one of the things I don't like about baseball. It oh, can uh -huh. create a bit of ego in that, in that oh, area sure. there, especially for the, the batter as well. But anyway. And I will also say yeah. it can make for a rather boring experience for the person that's in right field. <laughs> Eventually, I was just a bench warmer, and I had a lot more fun that way. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I played a lot of right field until I got good enough to be able to be upgraded to second base, which is basically oh. the worst infielder position, except you have to be able to just get down on the ball rather quickly. Mm -hmm. But I was so small, it was like, yeah, that's easy for you. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, oh. hey, baseball's baseball's fun. I loved though how Koro Sensei had his little yep. like one, two, three, like little mm -hmm. signals there. Oh yeah. That was a really cool callback to the fact that he can change his color and his face and stuff like that. Yep. But the fact that it needed to be Nagisa that was the one that would get the info right. and translate it. Exactly. Which is why I think they had Nagisa be the catcher. Mm -hmm. Because the catcher is actually the captain of the team. Like this is, the, not literally, uh -huh. but the catcher has a unique position in that they can see the whole field. So they get right. basically the opportunity to give commands, not just to the pitcher for what kind of throws, but they can stand up, throw back their mask and be like, all right guys, this is what we're gonna mm -hmm. do, this is what we're gonna do. And then they're also the one that has to be able to just catch the ball and catch the ball because if the catcher drops the ball you're screwed but not only that then shoot it over to second base you know like steal, immediately yeah. yeah yeah i never wanted to play catcher that position no. terrified me but uh we got ourselves that extra little bit of power of friendship at the end that's right and i did. loved that sugino didn't take the bait regarding what shindo said regarding oh, well, you just wanted, like, why didn't you show me your strength or the result or anything? He didn't get into an argument about that. He then went from, yeah, we were doing janky tricks, but mm -hmm. we actually did some pretty cool, pretty strong things yeah. in this game. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? And, you know, maybe, you know, maybe next time we'll get to do a more realistic kind of game, an actual more game. More straightforward, maybe. And then, you know, that'll be in high school. And that was something that Shindo said. Like, he wanted to mm -hmm. face him off, face off yep. against him for real. And... I think Sugino really won here in that regard then. That because Shindo did. came this close to being like just a frothing brainwashed oh, yeah. the, the part, pawn of the principal. I, I will say though, I've seen kids like that. Where, that is actually like, realistic. Where, somewhat. where, the, where yes. the dads are so like, you're yeah. going to do this, you son. You kill him, son. You kill him, yeah, son. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, and then, and, and and then the they go like, in there. <gasps> <gasps> all right, all right, yeah, yeah. And then they go in with the, you know, not four bats, but you know, it's the thing of the... I am I am a monster, basically birthed by you know parents that are wanting to relive their childhood. Yes. And yes, you know what it reminds me of? What it reminds me of Bill Burr's comedy act where he's talking about his pit bull, where he's talking about how he's all like, "Yeah, you're in yelling at the TV," and I didn't know that the dog picked up that too. He's in the background, "Yeah, I hate that guy," <laughs> and that's that's basically what little sports boys are like when their dads get all like. Aah! get way too into oh it and then they're like yeah yeah i hate that guy <laughs> like <laughs> it's, it fits so well doesn't uh, it like yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah oh man but okay we got a new op we did we did and, and i it, like that we kept the ed mm -hmm. because i i just gotta say it's a good ed the ed is like i i the ed is perfect for mm -hmm. for me i I really, really like it. I hope we don't switch it for the rest of the season, mm. personally. But uh, that OP, it has so much energy to it. Like, mm. the because the first OP, there are a lot of things about it where it's like, okay, I can see a bit of the first OP in here. Right. But the first OP had like the, sort of like the build up and the ebb and the flow and things okay, like that. sure. I am really excited to go through on future episodes and oh, just and keep seeing this it. OP because there yeah. was a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. There was a, there was a ton. Also, also, I have to give a shout out 
to bitch sensei that joke of her being like her her studying and i'm thinking she's gonna come up with some strategy of like right. i'll distract the other team or right. something no it's the oh that's how it works you hit the ball with the the stick you take the stick and the ball and <laughs> I, oh my it was god literally a baseball for dummies thing yeah because like Let's be real. We've all been that person at some point where we look at the thing. We're like, oh, sports ball. How does it work? Right. But, but also, like, we're all like, like, we're all more just that we don't care. Mm -hmm. But if we actually wanted to kind of figure it out, it'd be actually like we just look at it and go, yeah, they want to get the ball into that thing over there. Or they want to hit the ball mm -hmm. out of this thing there. It's, it's not that difficult. And to as far understand. as as far as games that I totally understand, people not knowing the rules to it all, baseball is one of true. them. True, true. Because baseball is not. I'm just gonna say it's not that entertaining of a sport. No, like no. When it is entertaining, it's great. Yeah. When it's not, it, it's just not. It's yeah. it's one of the most boring things you can watch. I, I agree. I think basketball, soccer, um, yeah, football, like that. Those I are get, all. Right. Those are all. I would say. Those are the of those and then baseball. Those are the four main sports in um, in the U.S. But like of all of them, baseball is clearly the weakest in oh, terms yeah. of being fun to watch. I like, would say I would say that it's mostly because of how many players can just end up sitting on the field not doing anything. Mm -hmm. Yep, and yep. that's just not fun. The most that's, entertaining thing for me playing about playing baseball was that I had an excuse to eat sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds. Are that a was cool basically time. it, and maybe the big barbecue, five barbecue, gum. barbecue were good. Barbecue were the best. I didn't yeah. really like original, but no um, original. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I gotta say though, it's a really good sport to uh, watch. Is ultimate frisbee though. Mm. Okay, we're we're actually not discussing. Yeah. We're not discussing the episode episode anymore. At all. But y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction yep. and discussion. Uh, if you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get on early access there. You can watch full length timer reactions there, and all this comes with Discord access. You can chat with us in the community there about this show, about anime in general, and you can also talk with Jacob about the sci fi novel that he wrote. That's right. It's a bit of pro path. Bleh passion project of mine that i did it's called battle lines if for some reason you haven't heard of it by now it's on amazon link in the description yes yeah, so if any of that interests you we'll see you there but until then we're semblance of sanity i'm caleb i'm jacob and we'll see you all next time, next time.